Greetings, my fellow lovers of Chinese tea and Yixing teapots. This is Mike from The Wandering Tea House. Today we have a fun video for you. Today we're going to tackle 10 myths about Yixing Jisa teapots. One of the reasons I started this channel is that in the tea world, in the English-speaking tea world for sure, there's so much misinformation out there. Uh, especially if you're a beginner trying to navigate your way through to learn more about Chinese tea and Gong Fu Cha. So one of those areas that has so much misinformation and uh, mistranslation is Yixing teapot. So today we're going to go ahead and tackle 10 of the most popular myths about Yixing teapots. And we're going to try to correct a few of those. Just like I said about uh, tea itself, I am not a tea master and I'm not an Yixing teapot master either. There's lots of people out there that know a lot more than I do. But after so many years of collecting and being obsessed with them, I've learned quite a little bit. So uh, let me show you a little bit of my collection. So to say that I have a love of Yixing teapots might be a slight understatement. More accurate description might be to say, I have a little bit of a collecting problem. <laughs> uh, I've been collecting Yixing teapots for oh, over 12 years now and have everything from, you know, Qing Dynasty all the way up to something that was made just a couple months ago. So yeah. Let's just say Yixing Jisa teapots are one of my big passions. Yixing teapot myth number one. The idea that if you keep using the same teapot over and over and over again with the same tea, eventually you won't need to put any tea in it at all. You just put in hot water and tea will come out of the pot. This myth has probably been around as long as Yixing teapots have been around, I'm guessing. It's a really good selling point. It's a very romantic story. Um, there's talk about you know, a farmer, a simple poor farmer that uh, had a teapot that was so old and well used that um, the emperor was passing by and in secret somehow served tea to the emperor. And the emperor asked, what type of tea are you serving? This is amazing. And the farmer was embarrassed and said, I'm so sorry. You know, I, I don't have any money this year. There's actually not, there's no tea in the pot at all. I'm just pouring hot water in and, and you're getting this tea from all the use of the teapot. Um, it's a really nice romantic story, but sadly not entirely true. But like a lot of Yixing myths, there's a little grain of truth in there. Um, so I'll give you a story. Um, this is a teapot that I bought off of eBay actually, and it's not Yixing, it's actually Bizenware from Japan. Bizen is obviously different than Yixing teapots, but they do have some things in common. They're both unglazed clay and they're both uh, types of clay that can season with tea the more you use it. So when I first got this teapot um, and started to play around with it and check it out, I noticed that it had a strong aroma to it. When you open the lid and smell inside the pot, you could smell something. So I thought to myself, I've always heard this legend about pouring in hot water and getting tea out of it, so I gave it a try. And uh, you could tell when I got the teapot, it was very, very, very well used, had tea stains like crazy. The inside was like caked with tea stains on the inside. And I thought if any teapot's going to prove this myth true, it's going to be this one. So uh, I poured in hot water and poured it out. And to my surprise, the water that came out was kind of greenish you know, and it wasn't just clear. So that was interesting. And then I tasted the water and I could actually taste the residue of the tea here. Um, now, the thing about this is, as soon as I could taste the tea residue, I figured out what it was. This teapot had been used for rose-scented uh, Japanese green tea for many, many, many years, obviously. So when I poured that hot water in and poured it out, that water definitely had a little bit of taste, but mostly the aroma of rose petals. And I did that three more times, poured water in and water out, and with each time I did that, the scent and the aroma and the flavor got less and less and less and less. So um, by the third time I poured the hot water in and out, pretty much all the aroma and flavor was gone. So there is a grain of truth in this old legend. If you use the same teapot for the same tea again and again and again and again for years and years and years, they will absolutely um, get seasoned and they will have the aroma uh, of the tea and maybe a little bit of flavor but I don't think you're ever gonna to get to the point where you can pour in hot water and just get tea out for many sessions in a row. I think that's definitely put that one in the myth category. 
Yixing teapot myth number two. An Yixing teapot, a good one, will turn ordinary tea into very good tea. I wish that were true. Sadly, that is not true. Um, basically, in tea world, you put crap in, you get crap out. Now, again, once again, there's a little grain of truth in there. Obviously, there's a reason that we use Yixing teapots, right? They can improve our tea for sure. Um, but the way I like to think of using Yixing teapot um, is kind of like using uh, graphic equalizer settings on your stereo, right? You can turn up the bass a little bit or turn up the treble a little bit or turn down the treble a little bit, and you can customize you know, your sound settings with that equalizer. Yixing teapots are kind of like the same thing, except that they're presets, right? You can't, one teapot kind of comes with its own preset and some of them might um, really highlight the aroma and the flavors of a tea, whereas other ones might highlight the mouthfeel and make it smoother and, and uh, less bitter. So um, a Yixing teapot is kind of like graphic equalizer settings on your stereo, but if you put junk tea into a Yixing teapot, you're still going to be drinking junk tea. It's not going to magically transform common ordinary tea into something fantastic. Yixing teapot myth number three. You need a different Yixing teapot for every type of tea that you drink. This myth came around because, once again, there's a little bit of truth. When you use Yixing teapots with the same type of tea over and over again, they do become seasoned. The, they do get better and better. The tea oils do soak into the clay a little bit and... Um, you know, basically they're going to make further brews better and better the more you use it. Now, do you need Yixing teapot for every single type of tea that you drink? No, you don't. Now, don't take my collection <laughs> as an example. I have too many pots. I'm the first to admit I'm a hopeless collector and I have too many. But if you're really trying to pare it down, well, you don't need one teapot for um, Shui Shan Yansha, and another one for Da Hong Pao, right? All Wu Yi teas are, are going to be similar enough that you can definitely use one teapot just for Wu Yi teas. And then I would even take it a step further. I would say that you could use the same teapot for all roasted oolongs, and then maybe a different teapot for greener, more floral, more fragrant, um, unroasted oolongs. Now, what you don't want to do, however, is pair up teas that are very um, different than each other. For example, would I want to pair up a uh, roasted oolong like a yancha with a young poor tea? Mm, not me. I don't think those two go, go together. The roasty notes from those teas are going to stay in the teapot eventually. They're going to season and you're going to get a kind of roasty oolong feel in that teapot. So if you go then and use that teapot for young poor that doesn't have any roasting whatsoever, it's definitely going to cross contaminate those flavors a little bit. So there are limits to how many, you know, how much crossover you want but i think that within roasted oolongs or green oolongs or you know h poor and true poor then you know put those together if, if you're just learning and just building up your collection that's not a problem at all yixing teapot myth number four you can pair any type of tea with any good yixing teapot the idea of this one actually comes from something that's true where the more you use a Yixing teapot with a certain type of tea, the more it seasons, right? The more tea oils get absorbed and the better it gets. That part is true. However, um, pairing teas with the teapot from the get-go is an art all in of itself, and it's an art that takes years to learn. Hit that subscribe button. I'm definitely going to have future videos on my method for um, pairing teapots, Yixing teapots, with certain types of tea. There's a whole process, there's a whole art to it. But the bottom line is that you want to make sure that you have a good tea pairing with that teapot right from the get-go. And you don't want to just assume that any teapot that you buy, if you just use it enough, it's going to eventually treat that tea well. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't want to waste a whole bunch of money on really good tea to build up a teapot that is going to take 20, 30, 40 sessions with that teapot just before the tea starts to taste right. I want to make sure that when I'm brewing tea in an Yixing teapot, that that teapot makes my tea better right from the get-go. Um, now, that being said, teapots do have a break-in period. You know, you need to use them two or three times um, so the pores start to absorb those tea oils and it starts to give it back to you. But if you're using that teapot one or two, three times and you're not really getting what you want out of that tea, well, in that case, it's not a good pairing and you should find a different tea to use that teapot. This is a mistake that I see uh, beginners in Chinese tea make 
all the time. They, you know, they're looking online to buy an Yixing teapot and they find one they like and they think, okay, well, I'm going to use this teapot for this tea. Well, you can, there's no rules against it, of course. And you never know, you might get lucky and it might be a great pairing. Um, but the truth is the teapot always chooses the tea, not the other way around. We don't choose the tea that the teapot's going to like. The teapot itself is going to choose the tea. Yixing teapot myth number five. X type of clay is always the best for Y type of tea. This myth piggybacks on that last one I talked about, about how pairing a tea with a teapot is an art in of itself if you're really looking to get the most out of your tea. So part of that is I hear a lot of people that are new to Chinese tea and a lot of people that are new to Yixing teapots will always go to forums and ask really similar questions. They'll say, I really, really love drinking uh, Wu Yi. I really love drinking Yancha. What is the best type of clay for that tea? Uh, I wish it was that simple. I wish it worked that easily, but um, clay types is not necessarily a good guarantee of what types of teas will work well with that clay. And there is a reason for that. The clay type is by far not the only variable at play. I'll give you an example. So I have two teapots here. They're both uh, Shui Ping shape. But as you can see, the one over here is very high fired red clay. This is very high fired Hong Mi clay. You can hear the sound of that one. And this one is actually Zini clay, a little more low fired. But we have two different types of clay. We have red clay and purple clay. And the problem here is, well, guess what? Both of these teapots do extremely well with green Taekwon Yin. Um, you would, most of the time, if you were to talk to people, you'd think, well, the, the red clay, the Hong Ni, would be much better fit for the green Taekwon Yin because Hong Ni is better at reflecting those higher notes, those more floral, delicate aromas. But for some reason, this Zini teapot, the clay is just such a high quality and it's thin walled and it's well fired that this teapot does amazingly well with green Taekwon Yin. So it just goes to show that you can't necessarily pick out a clay type and assume that it's going to do well with a certain type of tea. Other variables that are also important when you're talking about Yixing teapots and what type of tea, uh, we need to talk about the clay quality, right? Not all Hong Ni is created the same. There's Hong Ni that's really, really high quality and some that's really, really junk quality mixed with other things. So of course the two of them are not going to perform the same. Uh, another thing we're talking about is how long was that clay aged? A lot of people don't know that um, Yixing clay or Jisa clay is actually aged for, can be up to, you know, months, if not years ahead of time. So how long that clay has been aged ahead of time. Uh, another big factor is how high fire the teapot is. Teapots are fired at all different temperatures and different clays require different temperature firings. But some clays are a little more high fired, some a little more low fired, and that's going to have a big effect on, on what uh, teas they pair well with. Other things like the thickness of the teapot walls, the speed of the pour, even the particle size of the clay. Uh, Yixing clay is actually um, starts out as rock and then is ground down into small particles. So depending on how finely those particles are ground down, whether it's going to be big, chunky, kind of sandy particles or very small particles, that's going to have an effect on the tea. So um, saying that, you know, Juni is always the best clay for, um, you know, young poor or saying that Zini is has to be the only clay that you use for cooked poor. Doesn't really that work that way. There can be all sorts of variations, all sorts of other things. So once again, as a case of the teapot chooses the tea, not the other way around. You kind of have to really test out your teapots to see what tea goes well with them and then go from there. Yixing teapot myth number six. Older clay is always better. Or another way you could say that is uh, all the good clay has already been mined out and there's no more good clay left. It's kind of two sides of the same coin, two sides of the same myth. Um, like any collectors, you know, there's lots of people that collect Yixing teapots. Like any set of collectors, you're going to have people that, that say that, well, the rarer thing, this rare thing that I have is so much better than your new modern thing. And this is the only real thing, real real good teapots are these ones. Um, it's kind of funny because, you know, if you get into collecting factory teapots, let's say, if you're into collecting factory one teapots, um, even in that world, then people are going to tell you, 
oh, well, you know, the, the stuff that was made in the 90s is not as good as the stuff that was made in the 70s. And of course, the stuff that was made in the 70s is not as good as the stuff that was made in the 50s and 60s. So to call this one a myth isn't 100% accurate, but for the sake of this video, I'm going to call this a myth. Now, it is true that old, back in the olden days, whether we're talking, you know, 50s, 60s, all the way back to Qing Dynasty, back then clay was a lot more pure and there was no additives added to the clay. In modern times, there's a lot of junk clay out there. There's a lot of fake clay that has all sorts of chemical additives and oxide powders added to those clays um, to achieve a certain effect or whatever. Or clay is brought in from other parts of China and passed off as authentic Jisa purple sand clay. So there is some truth in this, that if you go back to the, you know, teapots that were made before uh, the mid 90s, basically you're almost kind of guaranteed that those teapots made before the mid 90s are going to have a certain level quality of clay. And it's a lot safer to buy teapots from that period. So that part's true. The part that's a myth though, is saying that a teapot that is from the turn of the century from 1900 is always going to outperform a modern teapot. That is just simply not true. Um, now, aside from the fact that people store clay, right? Pot potters that have been in uh, the pottery business in Yixing, China, whose families go back generations, they might have stores of good, authentic old clay from back in those days. Basically, the, the Chinese government shut down the famous uh, Yixing clay mines back in the mid 90s, the ones for that factories that used back then. So there is something to be said that clays that came out of those mines are the original Jisa clay that everyone talks about, and those are the ones that sort of have the more magic. So there's partly that's partly true. But I have modern pots that were made with clay that who knows where it's from, but some of my modern part modern pots can definitely compete with some of my vintage old factory pots or even my Qing Dynasty pots too. So um, it's important that when you're shopping, you make sure you get teapots that have really good clay, but it's kind of a myth that the older teapots are necessarily 100% of the time always better than the modern teapots. Are they more valuable to collectors? Yes, 100%. Do they make better tea? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. You have to try them out and find out for yourself. Yixing teapot myth number seven. Good Yixing teapots are always fully handmade. I've been collecting and using Yixing teapots for over a dozen years and the vast, vast majority of my collection are what we call half handmade. What that means is that the potters will use a mold to help uh, shape the body of the teapot. And then oftentimes the handle and the spout and the lid knob and other things will be handmade. So that's half handmade. Now, here's a little bit of truth. Um, teapots that are fully handmade are quite often made by people that are more skilled. So um, in the Yixing teapot world, you have everything from grandmasters down to apprentices and every, every designation in between. So uh, most of the time, you're not going to have um, apprentices or anybody making teapots that are fully handmade. Usually fully handmade teapots are you know, the, the crafts of people that are very masterful that have been doing it for many years. So in that regard, those people that have been making teapots for many years uh, have access to the best clays, they have access, you know, of course they have the better skills. So in that regard, are fully handmade teapots most of the time better than half handmade? Yes, most of the time they probably are better, uh, maybe better clay. But the truth is, do you need a fully handmade teapot to make good tea? No way. Um, a half handmade teapot, as long as it uses good clay, can make fantastic tea. You don't need to have a fully handmade teapot for your gongfu practice. Yixing teapot myth number eight. A good Yixing teapot should have a perfect lid fit. Now, obviously craftsmanship is something that's very important in Yixing teapots. We want to use teapots that have good craftsmanship. But if our ultimate goal is to make the best tea that we can, well, things like lid fit and how smooth the pour is and stuff like that really doesn't matter a whole lot. Um, the more important factors are the clay quality and firing level and things like that. So if we're thinking back to a lot of the teapots that are praised for their tea making ability, like factory one teapots from the seventies from the green label period or other things, a lot of those have kind of a janky lid fit. And a lot of those, when you pour them, you might get a lot of drips and dribbling from the lid. And maybe the pour from the spout isn't perfectly, you know, smooth and whatever. Well, guess what? If you're just 
focused on making good tea, it doesn't really matter so much. Um, this is another trick that a lot of vendors will use um, to show you, you know, they'll, they'll put the lid on and uh, cover the spout and turn the pot upside down to make sure the lid doesn't fall off because of the suction. Or, you know, they'll show you that they can pour from way up here and, and the stream isn't breaking up, you know. Um, stuff like that is, you know, it's nice, it's craftsmanship, but the truth is a lot of modern pots that are made with kind of junk clay can achieve that. They can achieve a perfect lid fitter. They can achieve a nice smooth pour. And it doesn't mean that you're getting a good teapot that can make really, really good tea. So to illustrate my point, let me show you one of my favorite, favorite teapots. Uh, this is a teapot that I have that is from Qing Dynasty. It's actually export to Japan. Um, came from Japan, from China, of course. Um, so this is probably my most valuable teapot in terms of its collector value. Um, and more, more importantly than that, it's a teapot that makes phenomenal tea. However, it's probably a teapot that has the worst lid fit of all my teapots, all my whole collection. Let me show you. So as we can see here, the lid fit is pretty loose on this. It moves around a lot, which means that when we pour water out of it, unfortunately, we get a lot of dripping. Now, there are things that we can do to help mitigate the dripping. We can pour a little bit out the front of the spout first before we start pouring. And then the most important thing is we can pour slowly at the beginning. But that's not too bad right there. But if I really pour, you'll see how much that's dripping right there. So we need to pour very slowly and carefully if we want to get good use out of this pot. Yixing teapot myth number nine, never let tea sit in a teapot overnight or longer. One of the really nice things about uh, Jisa clay is that it has the ability to keep tea fresher for longer. Um, so if people give you advice, don't leave your tea in the pot overnight. Well, that's only half true. Now, I regularly do overnight infusions of tea that can go for, you know, overnight 12 hours, even 24 hours and drink it a day or two later. That's fine as long as you're leaving the tea covered up with uh, boiling water. Um, of course, the tea is going to get cold. It's going to, it's not going to stay hot that long. But um, if you have the tea with water in the teapot, then go ahead, do overnight infusions, do one or two day infusions, no problem. The problem is you don't want to leave wet tea leaves without any water in your teapot. That has a good chance of molding or growing, going bad. The other thing you want to make sure of when you finally do take the tea out of the teapot, you do want to rinse out all the tea leaves with boiling water. And when you store the teapot after that, you want to leave the lid off maybe overnight so that the teapot, all the water inside can evaporate because one of the biggest enemies of Yixing is mold. You definitely don't want to let mold grow in your teapot, but doing an overnight infusion with it full of water uh, from the boil is A-OK. -okay, that's fine. All right. Finally, Yixing teapot myth number 10. This last myth is a simple one. The myth is that you need a Yixing teapot to practice Gong Fu tea or to drink Chinese tea. This is not true at all. Um, of course, we love, I love Yixing teapots. I love having them. They make my tea practice better. I enjoy collecting them. I enjoy seeing how they change the tea and how they have an effect on the tea. I enjoy pairing the teapots with the tea. They're super fun to have. They're super great. I really enjoy them. But if you want to start a Gong Fu tea practice or Chinese tea practice, you don't need to invest 150 upwards into an Yixing teapot. It's just not necessary. If you're starting your Gong Fu practice, I highly, highly recommend using a Gaiwan first. That's the lidded cup. I should have one here, but uh, start using a Gaiwan first and that will help you to understand the teas better anyway. So I wish when I had started my Gong Fu practice, I'd actually held off on buying Yixing teapots for a while. Um, just like a lot of people, uh, you know, I, I started lusting after the Yixing because they have such a cool history. Um, but, you know, the truth is, if you're trying to learn more about tea, using a Gaiwan, using a porcelain Gaiwan is going to be better because you're going to be able to focus on the tea by itself without the distraction of what the Yixing teapot can do. And remember, the original Gong Fu tea practice comes from Chuzhou, and in Chuzhou, they have their own types of clay. This is a, a Chuzhou teapot right here. So 
Yixing and Gong Fu Tea have a long history together, but the original Gong Fu Tea probably didn't even use Yixing teapots. So are they fun to have? Yes, they're awesome. I'm not going to lie. They're great. But do you need one to start Chinese tea practice? No, definitely not. Get yourself a good gaiwan, focus on the teas, sample, 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 lots of different teas, learn what you like, learn how to brew. And then from there, you can start um, buying Yixing teapots when you know a little more. Um, that way it's easier to avoid paying tuition. We all talk about uh, tuition in Yixing teapots, um, buying teapots that are either not very good or too big for what we use or just teapots that you outgrow too quickly because the quality isn't high enough. So um, myth number 10, no, you do not need an Yixing teapot to practice Gong Fu tea. You just need passion and um, a lot of practice and a lot of love for it. So this brings us to the end of the 10 myths about Yixing Jisha teapots. Um, tell me what you think. Uh, this is always just my opinion. I am not the uh, end all be all authority on Yixing teapots. So write some comments below. What did I get right? What did I get wrong? What do you agree with? What do you disagree with? Um, but keep it civil, keep it fun, right? Um, all right, guys, thank you guys for tuning in. And I uh, hope you guys learned something today. Keep enjoying your tea. Keep using your Yixing teapots. And uh, have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.